So welcome back to Fenrir K9 Training and we have yet another Fox Red Lab with us today and we have got another case of extreme pulling which is driving the owners mad and this is a dog of another friend of a friend who have got to the point where this is just becoming a nightmare. He's a young one year old working line Labrador so he needs exercise but because of how badly he pulls exercising him has become incredibly difficult so today we are going to be going through my process of how I take a dog from extreme puller to walking really nicely on a loose lead as quickly as possible. Now in this video I'm going to go into a bit more detail about my three step philosophy for fixing most undesirable behaviours. Now these are the three steps that you absolutely can also take at home. Now the first step to a fixing a bad behaviour like pulling is we have to let the dog know that that behaviour isn't acceptable and we call this stage the correction stage. Dogs need to know when they're doing something wrong otherwise they're just guessing what it is that you want from them so we have to have the ability to make it very clear what we do want and what we don't want we absolutely have to have the right tool for the job so as is very often the case when dogs become extreme pullers they start to hurt their windpipe they start to make those horrible noises and because people don't want to see their dogs in harm they'll move over to a, a harness based solution but the harness often makes the problem much worse harnesses are incredible this is our Fenrir harness but you need to have the right tool for the job and the harness is not the right tool for addressing intensive or extreme pulling the tool we're going to be using today is my trusty slip lead so we're going to switch over to that we're going to go nice and high just behind the ears and we're going to make sure that it's snug so at the root cause of a dog that pulls really badly is a lack of guidance and direction and why I've been talking you've seen that that's exactly the case at no point is George looking up to me for guidance and direction he's looking off in the distance and making his own decisions and those own decisions that he's making are the wrong decisions that's what creates pulling lunging and can often turn into reactivity or aggression so the thing that we're going to be correcting in this instance is George's lack of engagement with me when he does engage with me I have got a pocket full of treats and I'm going to be praising and rewarding the desirable behavior of him bringing his attention back to me and that is what we call our tune-up drill so drill you've seen me do many times before but with every dog it goes slightly differently so this is another excellent opportunity for you to watch exactly how that works good George yes Good boy. George? Good. Yeah, better. Good. Good. Good boy. Good. So as you can see, the difference in what was maybe 20 to 30 seconds is astronomically improved. I'm going to give you an example now of when I said, George, let's go. Good boy. Good. And this time he isn't wanting to surge out in front of me because he needs to be better aware of me. George, good. I'm just starting to shape it here on my left hand side. George, yeah, good boy. Good. Good boy. Good. George, good boy, yes. What a good boy. Sit, good boy, yes. Good boy, good. Huge, huge improvements. Now that is essentially step one done. I'm happy with the correction stage. I've made it very clear that you now do not pull on this lead when we are out walking together. Now I can do a whole video about just this correction phase and we've done many in the past and those videos have helped hundreds of thousands of people be able to have miraculous results. Now as a canine behaviorist, I never like to give an owner a dog back in this stage, even if the owner is incredibly happy with this result. Ideally, you have taught this in a positive fashion from day one, and then you don't need to use such heavy corrective or compulsive methods. We use these methods just to quickly say, hey, no, that's not acceptable anymore. But then we move on to step two and three. So step one is correction. Step two is then redirection. And step three is reinforcement. And that is where we want to live. And if we only ever stay in 
step one in the correction world, we're missing out on a huge realm of amazing opportunities, not only to teach your dog wonderful things, but build a better relationship. With that line in the sand, we're now gonna move forward positively. So step two is redirection. I need to redirect him to the behavior that I do want, which is when where we start formal heel training. And that formal heel training follows an incredibly positive luring, marking, and then reinforcing based procedure. As we redirect, we need to teach them what it is that we want them to achieve. So we've corrected the undesirable behavior, but now it's our role and our duty to redirect them to the desirable behavior, what we do want from them, which is where we can either free shape the behavior, which is what you just saw me doing. Every time he's in the right position, and then praising and rewarding that behavior. And then I can start to cue up that behavior with the term heal. Then you are left with a way to communicate with your dog, which is beautiful. You can reinforce the desirable behavior. Tell them what it is that you do want from them. And then you can pay them and reward them when you offer that desirable behavior of be here on my left hand side or right hand side, it doesn't matter, but on a loose lead. But now you also have the missing component that that most people don't have, which is the ability to say, hey buddy, stop. But what you'll find is as you practice this, and this has unfolded in the last 10, 15 minutes, the requirement to correct your dog becomes low to non-existent because we've removed that undesirable behavior. That undesirable behavior is now down from 100% of the time to maybe zero, maybe one, two, 5% of the time. So the amount of correction we have to use is minimal. But because we're also redirecting and reinforcing the desirable behavior, that behavior is going to increase. And if the undesirable behavior is 5%, then the desirable will be 95, which means we can praise and reward 95% of the time and only need to correct 5%. The more we do that, it is absolutely possible to get your dog to 100% desirable behavior. So you're only ever praising and rewarding and 0% undesirable behavior. George, let's go. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe because we do videos like this every single week to help you have the dog of your dreams that you absolutely deserve, to have a wonderful relationship with your dog and for you to be the leader that your dog deserves. So I can't wait to see you on the next episode of Femme Canine Training.